Hi, I'm James Killinen, founder of Killinen Luxury, and today we're going to talk about where do pearls come from. So you might already know that pearls come from oysters, so today we're going to get into a little bit more specifics. So the majority of pearls today are cultured pearls, which means that they have grown with the help of man. And what they do is they take a little bit of tissue and sometimes they have a nucleus and they put that inside the oyster. And what this will do is after around two years, a pearl will form around that tissue or that nucleus. So the real question is, is where do pearls actually come from? And the simple answer is, it depends on the type of pearl. Now if you don't know what the difference is between the different types of pearls, we have a different video talking about the different types of pearls and we'll leave a link in the description for you so that way you can understand the different pearl types. So the first one we're going to talk about is freshwater pearls. Today the majority of freshwater pearls come from China. In fact, 95% of all the freshwater pearls in the world are come straight from China. And most of these are going to come from uh, Juji, which is where the majority of the pearl manufacturing um, and development is. There are some other cities such as Suzhou and some small areas, but most of these are going to be in Juji. And pearls in China actually is more of a newer thing and is considered more of a cheaper alternative to a lot of your other pearls um, as they haven't been as popular around the scene um, so generally, they're relatively new compared to your other pearls. So the next one is Akoya pearls. Akoya pearls come from Japan. These pearls have been around for over 100 years and has actually a, a pretty big history overall. And that's because um, when you think of pearls in general, you see c celebrities on TV or uh, famous people with with pearls, you're generally going to think of Akoya pearls. These are your white pearls, very round, lots of luster, and Japan actually still dominates this industry today where a lot of pearls, even if they don't originate in Japan, um, a lot of the sourcing will still come from Japan and they have a lot of beautiful areas that they can do in Japan such as Kobe and a lot of smaller areas which will uh, develop pearls. The next one is your black pearl. So black pearls um, actually aren't really black, they have multiple colors, but these will come from French Polynesia. Another uh, name that they sometimes call these black pearls is Tahitian pearls. Now they don't actually come from Tahiti, what they do is they come from all these small little islands called atolls, and then what they'll do is collect all these up and they'll bring them to Tahiti, and then they can be analyzed by the government. So they ha used to have this approval process to approve them to make sure that they have the minimum requirements in order to pass on for export. So Tahiti still has a big industry for, for pearls, and black pearls are very popular. They're not quite as old as Akoya pearls, um, but they're much older than what you would be for your freshwater pearls. And it's a great place to go if you want to go and see pearls develop because, you know, who doesn't want to go to Tahiti? The next one would be South Sea Pearls. Now South Sea Pearls will go, come from two different places because there's two different types of South Sea Pearls. You have white South Sea Pearls and you have gold South Sea Pearls. Your white South Sea Pearls generally are going to come from Northern Australia. And so there is a huge history of pearls from Australia as well. Um, some people even think that the first pearls come from Australia instead of Japan. And I'm not really going to get into debates on that, but uh, we just know that there is a long history in Australia, especially it's like Northern Australia. And these big white South Sea pearls are really gorgeous and they're quite secluded from the rest of Australia. And one of these special features about your Australian pearls from the South Sea is that a lot of these pearls today, they still swim and catch wild oysters to, um, to culture the pearls. And most of these other locations that we're talking about today, they actually do the whole process where they have hatcheries and they grow the oysters from babies up until they're old enough to produce pearls. 
where in Australia, this isn't really the process. They still have your divers going dive and collecting uh, oysters, and then they use those oysters, um, if they're proper, then they can use those oysters for the production process. So that's kind of unique to your South Sea Australian pearls, your South Sea whites. Whereas your South Sea gold pearls, these ones are mostly coming from places like Philippines, Indonesia, or Myanmar. However, for us at Killinan Luxury, we get our pearls for gold pearls at uh, the Philippines. And the reason is because your Philippine pearls are a little bit of a darker, rich gold compared to your other places. It's something that the other places haven't quite been able to get with that color. And part of that has to do with just the area, the water temperature, and some food and other factors. But generally, if you're getting those deep gold pearls, they're going to come from um, from the Philippines and what's great is they have some really secluded areas uh, which are far away from people so it's not going to be in your tourist places it's going to be more in places like Palawan or some of the other smaller islands with less, less tourists that way we have nice clean water to produce great pearls. So by having these pearls in Palawan they're kind of more secluded and you get really nice clean water by doing it that way. So we do have a few other types of pearls that we didn't really talk about and part of that is because some of them aren't really pearls and the other ones are just not as common so you might not really see them. So first we have Sea of Cortez pearls. The Sea of Cortez pearls actually come from Mexico and they're actually called your rainbow pearls which these ones are really beautiful and it's just something that's not that common so you might not really see those on the market. The last one is Mabe pearls. Now a Mabe pearl also isn't really a pearl as it is a half pearl which is grown on the shell rather than inside the oyster. So these ones also come from Japan and these are actually the original cultured pearl. So before they had cultured pearls what you had was a Mabe half pearl. So if you really like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I think you're ready to really understand where these pearls come from. I'm James Killinan with Killinan Luxury.